It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very First much. First time in Studio Q for First you guys. Time, yes. Thank you for being here. Uh, the, you know, that song on this record has a distinct block party sound that mm. we're used to. Mm. Uh, but as I mentioned in the, in, the, in the introduction, there are some really heavy rockers on this mm. album. What incited that heavy turn? What incited the heavy, heavy turn? Um, uh, you know, I think, I don't know, I think we hadn't really made a record that, you know, we hadn't really made a record that explored that kind of immediacy for, for, for a long time. Um, you know, I don't know, why is that a heavier record? I think we were just quite excited about playing together in a room together because we hadn't really done that for a while and I think there's a tendency to want to push things and make I have a theory. Well, what's your theory? This is my theory. Having seen you guys play live a mm. few times, um, you've got a bashing kind of punk rock element mm. live that we don't always hear on the album and yeah. I wondered if you were trying to capture that on the record a bit. It's funny you say that actually because I remember when we... We, uh, our, our, drum, our drum tech that's here with us now, he's been with us from the beginning. And I remember when he heard, when we, when we put out our first record, Silent Alarm, he, um, he he said he was a little bit disappointed when he heard it because it wasn't like, it, you know, it wasn't like how he'd heard the songs, you know, from um, from us playing them. It, it was quite produced and, and, and whatnot. And that always stuck with me, that always stuck with me that, you know, um, we ne we've never really made a record that uh, we've ever, never really made a record that has that kind of stripped back nature, and I felt that's and it felt, and it felt like this was the time to do something like that. Well, the same particular energy. It's almost yeah. like there's and this is you're not it's not unique to you. I mean, even the Beatles were like this. Yeah. There's, a, there's the the recorded version, and then there's the live version, right? I, and I, and, I, and I think that's something to I think that's something to cherish because studios are pretty magical places and. You know, and, and and you know, and and it's not always about just capturing the live energy. That you know, there's lots you can do. But I'm studio. guessing a song like "We Are Not Good People" mm. was live off the floor. Uh, or, yeah, pr or, or why? <laughs> Don't disillusion me. No, pr but, pretty much. I can't remember. That was the first one. We, that was one of the first ones we did, and it was a pretty. Yeah, it was pretty quickly recorded that one because that's a, a just to let people know what i'm talking about if mm. they don't know the record yet that's sort of a a bashing a rock tune that sounds very alive mm. uh, uh let me come back to this record sure uh, let's walk through a bit of the history of block party because there are uh, there are people listening across the continent who who we may be just introducing you to it you first met russell the man mm. with the great leads there uh uh, not at Leeds, but at Reading mm. uh, in 1999 at the Reading Festival. Tell me about that encounter. I mean, I'd, I'd met him before. He was um, when I was at secondary school. I um, I was friends with uh, one of my friends was one of his friends. Russell wasn't at my school. He was sitting at home uh, playing uh, Super Nintendo uh, at the time. So, but I'd, I'd met him, but I'd never really spoken to him. And I think at, at Reading, at Reading, that was when I asked him whether he'd be in a band with me. So you knew he, you knew of him as being a great guitarist. Um, uh, no, I think I, I think R R Russell's greatness has vastly uh, imp improved. <laughs> you wanted to be in a band with him, despite the fact that he no, wasn't he, a good. No, he was good. He was a great right. guitarist. Right. I, I, I remember I saw him play once in a in an Ash tribute band, and that was when I knew that he had something special. <laughs> and and what were your aspirations when you began? I mean, did. You, did you, having met at Reading, could yeah. you have even imagined that one day you'd do, do the main, main stage at one of the biggest festivals in Britain? No, I mean, what were, what were our ambitions? I think our ambitions were just to make music that we felt was exciting. Um, you know, and, and, you know, when we formed in the late, you know, when I started making music for Russell in the late 90s, it was a very kind of... Um, it was a very dull place for British guitar music. Everyone sounded like you know, a star sailor or something. It was all kind of right. quite um, acoustic guitar kind of right. driven. And I, you just wanted to make something that was loud. That was the only real game plan. But the other interesting thing is I've, I've read that from the beginning, your influences were bands like Joy Division mm. and Susie and the Banshees and the Cure, and, and, and mm. not Susie and the Banshees? I mean, not not at the beginning, no. Okay. Yeah. But, but those are like early... 80s late 70s yeah. band references yeah what why was that era i mean it's no it's no secret that people mm. have talked about you sounding like having an 80s sound at times yeah where, where, where did that come from i mean I, I i don't really know where that came from you know i think 
you know, I guess, you know, uh, you know, me personally, uh, you know, there are four members of, uh, of the band. Me personally, bands like Joy Division and New Order were never big influences on, on, you know, on um, why I chose to, to be in a band. You know, to be honest, I was looking a lot more at 90s kind of rock music, bands like Blur and, um, you know, Suede and Elastica and mm. Smashing Pumpkins. Right. Um, you know, um, that was my first and that was my first entry into music but you know when our first record came out there was lots of talk about gang of four and yeah. and the cure and you do sound a bit like gang of four i mean that's, I, what, that's the reason well yeah <laughs> but I, I i don't know you know i i i never i, I never heard that I, I never heard i mean i i i hear aspects of it now right, and right. i think sometimes those ideas in the you know in the exchange of pop music sometimes those ideas can uh can, you know you can you can learn that Bands that you've been influenced by have been influenced by records and right, bands right, and, right. And, and, and 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 some and and so on. But it was you know there, I was you know I, I don't I don't own any I don't own right. any Joy Division. You guys records. didn't sit around and go, let's be the new Joy Division. No, <laughs> right. I, I think and and if anything, actually, that kind of tag really, uh, if anything, that kind of tag really annoyed me in the beginning, and that's why after Silent Alarm we really pushed ourselves away from that type of music and still now it was a good segue let me ask you about <laughs> silent alarm because yeah. your, your band forms yeah. and you, you release this first record silent alarm it becomes this massive hit yeah uh, i mean a hit debut record can be fantastic for a new band but yeah. it, it can also lead to the burden of pressure and yeah. expectations looking back yeah how did you and i know that you're just one of the four members so if you can speak for the band deal with the the success of that debut success i mean uh, uh, i don't know i don't think that we really um thought too much about it and i think that's and i think that's the way to deal with it is to carry on doing what you're what you do you know we we tour the world and we and we wrote another record quite quickly afterwards and um i think i think that's what you need to do you need to make sure that you're still doing what it is that you started you know doing what it is that you love um, making music um, and doing, doing that sort of thing. Did you your know, lives change? Did our lives? Yeah, I mean, yeah, our, our, our lives changed, uh, but we didn't know any different because this was the first record that we'd ever made. We didn't know, you know, we thought this, we thought that this is what everyone goes through. <laughs> right, everyone just has massive hit records. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. You know, grow, growing up in London, where we were from, it wasn't uncommon to, you know, f for you know. It wasn't uncommon to to see that you know that you could have a that your music could have a far-reaching um, mm. effect on people, you know. But looking back, Kelly, so I mean, you go on to release two more albums yeah. in quick succession, yeah. and two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. Yeah, that's three albums in four years. Yeah, touring yeah. promotion, heavy schedule by any band's mm. definition. Looking back, do you wish you'd taken more time between records? No, not at all. I, if it, not at all. I, I'm glad. I'm very glad that we that we worked hard um, when we did because um, you know I see it now. I see it now with, with you know I see it now with some bands, some British bands that take a lot of time in between records and and you know no uh, and uh, and I see how you know I see how 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 difficult it, it can be when you're being creative also to sit on something for a long time you know we wrote lots of music and put out the records in, in short succession because in quick succession rather because there was a desire to do so you know if we you know we had songs that we felt that we that we felt strongly about and we needed to, and we wanted to put a record out you know um you know i, I don't know no i i i, I, I there's nothing that that, that i regret in my so past Block Party fans, we get all these albums. Yeah. Then suddenly there's a break for four years. Yeah. How how did that hiatus happen? How did it happen? Yeah. I mean, why did it happen, or how did it happen? Both. Yeah. I mean, how how did did you get together and decide that this is consciously we're going to take a few years away, or, or did yeah. it organically just feel like you didn't want to write more? Or? I think it was a combination of things. I think you know. I think ultimately. Um, ultimately, it did take a toll on us. Um, going from world, you know, touring the world for a year to going into the studio, uh, making a record, and then going straight out and touring the world again for a year. I think that kind of um, schedule is somewhat punishing. And it, you know, and we needed some time away from each other. We needed some time to do other things. Um, 
yeah, so that's that's why it happened um, and how it happened. We just we we were all pretty much of the same of the same mindset that we needed some time. Well, on that note, you you used this time to work on your own solo mm. material in 2010. Yeah, you released your first solo record, The Boxer. Yeah, you've said that if you hadn't recorded that album, there was no way Block Party could make yeah. this new record. Yeah, what does I, that mean? Um, I mean, I, I don't think we would have made the record in the way that we'd made it. Uh, I don't think that we would have made for um, in the way that, that, that it was made. I think having an outlet to make music by myself. Um, you know, uh, having and 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 you know, we were talking about studios at the start of this record, but ha- uh, having the you know having an outlet to take an idea as far as I wanted in a studio setting, you know, because in the studio you can you're only really really limited by your imagination. You can manipulate things and edit things, and it's it's a very liberating, you know, it can be a very liberating place um, for a songwriter, and you know, so I, I've always enjoyed that aspect of. Um, I've always enjoyed that aspect of, of songwriting, um, you know. But approaching approaching the making of Four, I was adamant that the record needed to sound like it was the four of us, you know, without that kind of external uh, influence uh, on, on the music. It needed to sound like four musicians vibing off each other because, you know, I, I, I loved making The Boxer and I, and I loved making uh, The Hunter as well. But the, it was a very kind of laborious process of me sat by a computer with the producer editing stuff together and I just felt we need, now I needed to do something that was more spontaneous. I mean, the, the, the sort of traditional notion would be that just like a relationship, if you if you go away for a while, you appreciate mm. the relationship more when you come back. Mm. Uh, do you feel that way? Do you feel like doing the solo records made you appreciate <clears throat> Block Party and what these boys can do uh, in a different way? I mean, I, I've always appreciated what they can do as as musicians. I felt my headspace as a songwriter in 2008 and 2009 was that I just didn't want us to be seen as an indie band anymore. And I, and, and, and I still, you know, and I still feel that way that's why this record doesn't sound like what does an indie band sound like i mean i don't know what does an indie band well you said you don't want to sound like an indie band what do you mean yeah i mean in the uk where we're from there's a lot of um there was a period when it was a very fashionable thing to be um it was a very fashionable thing to be in in an indie band like where i lived in East London, I couldn't walk from my house to the train station without seeing, you know, lots and lots of guys carrying guitars kind of around, and um, <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I just, I, I, I don't know what indie music means in two thousand in uh-huh. two thousand and ten. You know, I, I don't know what it stands for, and I don't know. But what do you? When you say uh, we didn't, I don't want to be an indie. It's a really interesting. Thing. Yeah. What, what are you imagining? It, that you, what don't you want to be? Tell me what you don't want to be uh, musically. I, I, I don't want to be. I don't know. I I, I don't want to be jangly and, and light and um, and just b- b- background music on commercials. And um, I, I feel that if we're going to make music with guitars, we need to, you know, if we're going to do this, it has to be as uh, as essential and and extreme as, as as we can make it, you know, l- l- that was really the underpinning of four. Was that if we were going to do this, we need to really push ourselves. Mm. Do, do, can you just give an update on this? So this whole thing that happened with the band is broken up, and they, you know, everybody hates each other and all yeah. all that stuff. I mean, I, I don't, what, mm. what what is what, what? So was that all? Um, you somebody said something, and then enemy turned it into something, and then it just, it's just snowballed. What? Yeah, um, yeah. I think uh, I, I don't know if you I don't know if you know my interview style, um, but I, I I have a tendency to make stuff up in interviews. I, I I always I always have done you know in in the past, and and for the most part, people kind of play along. Um, you know, there was a picture on my blog of the three of the others. Um, <laughs> And I think a, a music magazine asked, you know, it, what we were doing, and you know, and and we we were making our record. We, we, we'd started writing the songs in New York. I didn't really want to say that because we didn't really know where anything was going to go. So I just said, oh yeah, I bump, you know, I followed one of them. I was in New York and I followed one of them, and they went into a studio without me. It's kind of my imagination went, uh, my imagination. Uh, 
went a little far with it. I didn't think it was going to be like a, a, a big deal, and right. then it, and then it, and then in queue to it being a big deal, uh, we didn't really. I didn't mean. Really, I don't know. I I didn't didn't really know what to think. I kind of thought it was funny right. um, because it was such an absurd image of me. Um, <laughs> Uh, skulking around, like sneaking, sneaking around. Uh, I, I didn't really take it seriously. Right. You don't seem like you're making things up in this interview. No, because you're asking interesting questions. Uh. Like when you when you when you're constantly asked about, I don't know, when you're constantly asked about stuff that isn't important, or uh, I don't know, I don't know. When you when you when when it doesn't when you don't feel that the journalist is uh, at least present. It's it's hard to then be present. It's hard to then force yourself to say sure. the stuff that you said for like six years nonstop. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm just uh, you know. I think I think that it comes out if I'm not really that into it. So. How do you guys know that this was the right time to make this record? Uh, <clears throat> to reconvene in a in a really f focused way and and go for it with four. Uh, well, how do we know it was the right time to make the record? Uh, I think we well we decided that we were going to take a year out. That's you know that's what we decided in two thousand and nine that we would take a year of not make, of not doing anything together, um, and then at the end of the year we you know and, and you know and so f throughout that year we didn't really um, you know throughout throughout that year I didn't think about block party at all. I, I did my own thing and everyone did and everyone did their own thing and towards the end of that year we realised we had to at least meet to discuss what we were going to do um, from this point onwards you know I didn't know what they were thinking they didn't know what I was thinking but we met in 2000 at the end of 2010 at Russell's house and we you know and we aired our grievances and we spoke about the past and we you know and we talked about what we could do in the future if we wanted to do something together so if you were to characterize, because you don't need to get into the details, but characterize what the nature of the grievances mm. were, what would it, they be? I think, I don't know, I think, I think, John, I think some things are private, you know. I okay. think, that, you know, some things, um, some things are private, you know, where we are for, you know, we are for friends that have had a very long history together, and I think some things don't need to be uh, brought up. I got that. Yeah. All right. Um you you decided to be very hands on with this record, especially mm. with the promotion. Um, yeah. Going so far as to help design a block party app for iTunes. Yeah. Tell me why it was so important to take hold of this album and the way it's received by the public. Well, not that you haven't been involved <coughs> in the, the other records, but you know, yeah. Is it, is it true that you're more involved in this one? Uh, I th I think so. Yeah, I think that in the past we would we've always. I don't know. In the past, we maybe shirked a lot of our responsibilities as um, creative people, you know, because it's. I don't know. You, you can get into a habit when there's a machine behind you, you know, a, a machine behind you, um, bankrolling everything. You can get into the habit of just not really, think, you know, not really worrying about the artwork or the the the, the, the videos and, um, you know, and engaging, you know. Uh, and I just I felt if we were going to do it this time, we needed to be behind everything. You know, everything had to come from us, um, because it was our you know it's our personalities, it's our it's our music that we're that we're. Um, it's a weird saying. industry structure in a way at times, right? Because it used to be. I mean, bands were always, I guess, promoted and had that kind of promotional vehicles and you know posters or whatever through the sixties and seventies, sure. et cetera. But, but. There's this notion that, okay, you guys make the music and then there'll be this team of people yeah. around you that'll create everything else. And meantime, the con mm. the person who's consuming this is consuming it as a package. So mm. your artwork or your video is going to mean as much to a certain extent. You know, it's a little less romantic, but yeah. as the music does, right? Yeah, yes. And uh, yeah, you're right. And and I learned that doing this solo project, you know, being responsible for everything, being responsible for the artwork and and the direction you know, I learned how important it was to make to take to to reclaim it yeah, and to take yeah. it all back and to make sure that you stamp your identity on on every image that is used for the campaign. You know, right on, yeah, and even if it means being a nuisance. Yeah, times, yeah, for sure, because it's I don't know. I I, I learned a lot making that record. Um, before I let you guys play another song, you, you, uh, uh, and we're th thrilled that you're here mm. performing. Thank you for doing this. You, mm. Since you guys formed in the early 2000s mm. to now, there's been this huge shift in how people consume music. Mm. You released your third album online mm. uh, 
well in advance of a, a physical form before yeah. many bands had discovered the benefits of digital sales. Mm. You, Block Party has always had this vibe of being forward thinking mm. somehow. What direction do you see Block Party taking? Uh, musical direction, or do you mean in in sense in a sense of in, in terms of the industry? It's a very good um, point. It's it's sort of a confusing mm. question. I, uh, let's let's um, let's. Do a one-two uh, <laughs> musically. Where would you like to see the band going? And then, and then, um, um, tell me about in terms of the industry. What you would? Um, mm, I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, if I'm honest, I've absolutely no idea where anything will go. You know, beyond this record. Let me put it another way, because yeah. I, I like the question was convoluted. Yeah. Um, often times people do this at the beginning of someone's career. You're, yeah. you're a few years in, but you're clearly a, you, on the journey. I, I would like mm. to think still early in the, the, the long-term block party journey. Mm. Where would you ideally, in your teenage dream kind of guy way, um, see the band five years from now? What would you like people to say about block party <sighs> five years from now? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I think we've made. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I think we've made some good records. I think the question, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not very good at, I'm not very good at pitching, you know, ideas in, in, into the future. I think, you know, our next record, you know, if you make a record, will be decided upon by the experiences that we have touring this record and the music that we hear. And Do you guys care about sales? Do you want to play stadiums? Uh, that, do you uh, care about that stuff? No, I mean... No, I mean it's it's good to you know it's good to be able to like come to a different country and play to people that care about what you do. You know, it's good to be able to be able to do this. You know, I know that not many there are not many um, British bands that, you know that can do this. You know, um, and you know, with our first record, we saw we saw the world and we saw um, I don't know we saw the world and we saw that if we do our own thing we'll be okay you know mm. and i think that idea's never left me personally you know i think it's a it's a, it's a double edged sword having that much exposure right at the start of your um you know career um but i've always taken that i've always taken i've always taken the success of silent alarm to be an indication of we we need to do our own thing you know we need to just do it our way and, um so, sorry, I can't remember what the question was. What was the question? Well, it was or, well, about, about, about playing stadiums. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's you know, I don't know, you know, no, I'm, I, I, I mean, you you want people to like what it is that you do mm. um, for sure. Like uh, the, the, the like, uh, I don't, I don't mean to keep rephrasing it, the, mm. uh, but I guess basically what I'm asking is, especially given what you guys have been through together over mm. the last few years, the successes, or the t tough times, et cetera. Mm. How do you think you define success as a band? Now? Uh, I think success, success is, um, I think success, I don't know. I, I, I think success is being able to do what you want to do, you know, and not, and not, you know, and not feel like you're going into an office or something you know not have that mentality if you're just doing something to 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 get through the day you know i i feel you know there's no one in the world that i have to answer to you know i, I get to be creative for a living and I, and I get to play to people all over the world and i i don't know you know there's nothing more that i want you know and there's, there's nothing i need you know there's no absolutely nothing else that I need so I'm very happy to be doing doing this thank you man thanks for the candor well it's the truth so. um I, I, it would have been exciting for you to make up some shit too you know yeah I, 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 I don't know I've, I've seen I've seen I've seen I've, I've seen you your interviews so they're all pretty highbrow so, <laughs> so I wanted to be you have careful. to bring your game I, I <laughs> 